Howdy. A few words about mountain water. And yes, I have been talking about this extensively in recent times. I think it's important. So, we start off at, at volcanoes and earthquakes discovery. We zoom into the Alps. Because Grand Combe, Bourg Saint Pierre, there has happened a 1.3 magnitude earthquake at a depth of 26 kilometers, which is rather deep for being within the Alps. And I really don't trust them too much, the location of the quakes. But I assume that they are more or less at the spot where they are. They can differ by hundreds of meters, I guess. That's a very interesting spot here. I'm pretty sure there is water in that house. And uh, if we zoom out a bit, we have this... Dorin de la Croix. Stream of the Cross, which originates here. It is just flowing out of the mountain in a debris field surrounded by bigger boulders. Or it just goes into the mountain and reappears here as it probably does several times. And as we go uphill, there is icy mm, deposits, glaciers. So there was this quake and there is broad and it's hot and things like this. Here we have the quake location. And we are within the Alps. Here are some bigger glaciers. PBS News Hour, 22nd August 2022. Already shrunk by half. Studies show Swiss glaciers are melting faster. Geneva, Switzerland's 1,400 glaciers. Yeah, it's a very small country and it has 1,400 glaciers. And if you think about this from the mountain water pr perspective, which means every glacier carrying mountain is a volcano. Glaciers are contemporary lava streams made out of water. Their output is fluctuating. Then Switzerland's 1,400 glaciers sounds impressive. But anyway, let's dive into that. Switzerland's 1,400 glaciers have lost more than their health volume since the early 1930s. A new study has found. And researchers say the ice retreat is accelerating at a time of growing concerns about climate change. ETH Zurich, a respected federal polytechnic university. Polytechnic is somehow interdisciplinary. And the Swiss Federal Institute of on Forest, Snow and Landscape Research on Monday announced the findings from a first ever reconstruction of ice loss in Switzerland in the 20th century. So we are 22 years in that, are we? No. 20th century. 1900s. Okay, sorry. 100 years off. <laughs> anyway, based in part on an analysis of changes to the topography of glaciers since 1931. Yeah, it's actually the 21st century already. Yeah, you don't notice this anywhere. 
people are the same. Just getting distracted with different kinds of toys. Anyway, the researchers estimated that the ice volumes on the glaciers had shrunk by half over the subsequent 85 years until 2016. Since then, the glaciers have lost an additional 12% over just six years. So it's going in a way like this. Glacier retreat is accelerating. Closely observing this phenomenon and quantifying its historical dimensions is important because it allows us to inter infer the glacier's response to a changing climate said Daniel Farinotti, the co-author of the study, which was published in scientific journal The Cryosphere. Yeah, if you see me weep, cry, the cryosphere. By area, Switzerland's glaciers amount to about half of all the total glaciers in the European Alps. The teams drew a on a combination of long-term observations of glaciers that included measurements in the field and aerial and mountaintop photographs, including 22,000 taken from peaks between the two world wars. By using multiple sources, the researchers could fill in gaps. Only a few of Switzerland glaciers have been studied regularly over the years. Yeah, I mentioned recently it's very really difficult to get somehow like information which fits together about weather patterns, glaciers and floods and all these kind of things because it's obscured by the diversity of the science branches. But anyway. The research involved using decades old techniques to allow for comparison of the shape and positions of images of terrain and the use of cameras and instruments to measure angles and land areas. Teams compared surface topography of glaciers at, a different, at different moments, allowing for calculations about the evolution in ice volumes. Not all Swiss glaciers have been losing ice at the same rates, the researchers said. Attitude, altitude, amounts of debris on the glacier, on the glacier and the flatness of a glacier's snout, its lowest part, which is the most vulnerable to melting, all affected the speeds of ice retreat. The researchers also found that two periods, in the 1920s and the 1980s, actually experienced sporadic growth in glacier mass, but that was overshadowed shadowed by the broader trend of decline. The findings could have broad implications for Switzerland long-term energy sources, since hydropower produces nearly 60% of the country's electricity, according to the government data. So we have dams in mountains. 60%. <laughs> and then we have... How does it draw again? Nuclear power plants which are somewhat 30%, maybe, I don't know. What is the connecting factor between those? I tell you. Water. A nuclear thermal, a nuclear power plant needs very much water. That's why they're on rivers or at the shores of seas, as we have learned in Fukushima. So, so I thought that we would go back to Volcano application to check out the quake, but it's gone. <laughs> Maybe it's just because of the time. Let's put two days so it should come back if it was because of the time. A yellow mark within the Alps. Are we in the right region? We weren't. Were we? Where is it? Sometimes they are easier visible if you go more far out. Where is the yellow quake? What? <laughs> really? It's gone. Are you kidding me? During the time I make a video about it. 
Shamoni. Where have you been? Where was the quake? <laughs> yeah, it's gone. But I have it somewhat. It's here. It was here, I guess. Bourg Saint Pierre. This is how it looks at the proximity of the quake, which has just vanished <laughs> during making the video. We have glaciers, obviously. There is like indentations, which look really interesting. We have lakes. We have very interesting rock formations. We can also see how the house is made. This might be this kind of char, what is it, limestone mortar, what they used. The background peak here is shrouded in clouds. I have to change color and the thinner line. Yeah, maybe that's better. We have lakes. They're just in this small area, are three of them. And I think they are, at least to some degree, fed from below. So their output will fluctuate. We have again a peak shrouded in clouds. There is electromagnetic energy transfer going on between heavens and ground. A pillar, heavenly pillar. It's very interesting the design of that. But we won't dive into this now. Yeah, maybe that's that was the house from very important, which used very important people in the past. What I mean by that is uh, we are still talking about the quake. Remember, Bourg Saint Pierre is a municipality in the district of Entremont in the canton of Valais in Switzerland. Bourg, Bourg Saint Pierre is the highest inhabited locality of the valley and the last village when ascending the Great St. Bernard Pass. Bourg Saint Pierre was first mentioned in 1125 as Burgus Sancti Petri. In medieval times it was a stage on the Via Francidena, Francicena. But to the history, Demographics, where was it? I have been reading in about that, otherwise I won't tell you. The Church of St. Pierre with his Romanesque tower. Water. Somewhere I was reading that there was Hannibal and the elephants going thereby and all these kind of things. But I don't find it yet or anymore. But anyway, let's go back to the map. The quake was somewhere in this region. This looks very interesting. That's the part where we had these waters coming out of the mountain. They traveled some distance and then they disappeared. And here is probably the reason why they somehow disappear because there's this kind of gorge and waterfalls and stuff like that. Or maybe it's disappearing somewhere here, I don't know. We don't have any more the quake. It vanished. So there is definitely some kind of debris stream here going on. Here's another one. Let's check out this place. There might be this kind of darker spots, which I interpret as wet spots. 
Yeah, this definitely has a caldera shape or a caldera like shape, and that's the outflow. Do we have any pictures of that? And also these kind of spots where we have snow. This might indicate that there is water pouring out. There is a constant connection to the ground below. There might be some charge differential as the reason why there is still snow. It's hard to explain. I think I thought about this many times, but how to explain? It would be negatively charged, so it would be colder than the surroundings, in a way like that. That's why there are those snowy spots which are found all over the world, also in Siberia, Canada, and all these kind of places. For, for sure in the Himalayas as well. So, we were reading this article. Already shrunk by half, studies show Swiss glaciers are melting faster. August 22, 22nd, 2022. Not that old. So let me show you this. In the article we read, they were recording for some amount of time, 100 years. These are both from Wikipedia, and these are thousands of years, which means 100,000, 200, 300, thousands, 300,000 years. We are looking at temperature fluctuations, and you can see it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Some 450,000 years ago, we were really low and then we went straight up. And now, we are here. Everybody's worried about climate change. There has a peak been much higher, some, let's say, 120,000 years ago. And obviously, it is a repetitive pattern. It goes up and down since 800,000 years, almost 1 million years ago. And the lower is thousands of years. So 12,000 years ago, all the lines just started to rise from below. And then it settled in, in a way, more or less stable. So we are watching yet another 12,000 year cycle unfolding in front of our eyes. About the last bigger, or like how to put it, Massive change, which isn't as massive as we are about to witness, has been written many books. And one of those books is probably familiar to you. Noah and the Ark. Because there was so much water. <laughs> yeah. Now we have hunger stones. The water is fluctuating. The output of the mountains is fluctuating. Everything is fluctuating according to the cycles. So, if I tell you, like, the output, output of the Alps is fluctuating, and here is one picture somehow to show you what I mean. 
And that's now quite long. Long time cycle. Thousands of years, 300,000 years. That's a long time. But they are fluctuating. And you have those smaller years, and there are many, many, many other smaller ones too. But they are fluctuating. But anyway, I think I leave it here. Following quakes, thinking about cycles. Thanks.